Hello and welcome to this Info Security Magazine webinar. My name is James Coker, Deputy Editor of Info Security Magazine, and I'll be moderating this afternoon's session, which is sponsored by Datadome. So for the next 60 minutes, we're going to be discussing the topic, the future of fraud defending against advanced account attacks. Uh, before I introduce you to our panel of speakers, there's just a couple of quick housekeeping points. We'll be running a couple of polls throughout the session, so please do join in with those as and when they appear. No right or wrong answers on those. We're just very interested to get your views. And also, please do use the submit a question function to let us know of any questions you might have, and also to let us know if a question is for a particular presenter. And we'll do our best to answer those later on in the session. And a quick note about CPE credits. This webcast qualifies listeners for one CPE credit based on the minimum attendance time of 50, that's five zero minutes. Once you've done that, you can download your certificate from your Info Security Magazine account and submit it, and further instructions can be found on the event platform. And please note certificates take 48 hours to be processed and will be made available to download the following day. So before we kick on with the session, I'd just like to introduce our speakers for today. Um, we have a great panel here. Uh, we have Antoine Vastel, who is VP of Research at Datadome. We have Pablo Ballerin, who is a member of the ISARCA Emerging Trends Working Group and co-founder of Balusian. Uh, we also have Teresa Walsh, who is Chief Intelligence Officer and Managing Director EMEA at FSISAC. And Fred Rika, who is partner at BPM. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Um, to begin with, I'd just like to launch our first poll question of the session. And this is, what is the biggest challenge with ch tackling a counterattack at your organization? And the options for this are A, the sheer volume of attacks, B, attackers' ability to bypass traditional security controls, C, attackers' use of AI technologies, D, user behaviors, or E, other and feel free to put that other in the via the question function. Um, so that poll's just gone live, so please do send in your thoughts. Um, but without further ado, I'd just like to hand over to Antoine, who will be giving us an opening presentation. Over to you, Antoine. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'm Antoine Vastel, VP of Research at Datadome. So we are a cybersecurity company protecting website and mobile application against uh, bot attacks, against online fraud. And so today I'm going to talk uh, more specifically about account fraud. So when it comes to account fraud, I, I will be talking mostly about two main threats. The first one is about stealing user accounts. So it may be related to threats such as account takeover, credential stuffing attacks. And the second one is about creating fake, fake accounts. These fake accounts then can be used to conduct this kind, different kind of things like influence fraud, spam. What you need to know is that but, uh, this kind of attacks, this kind of account fraud, they can be conducted manually, but also using bots to scale their attacks. So I will talk about both components in this presentation, but specifically about the use of bad bots to scale account fraud attacks. You may be wondering which kind of industries are targeted by account fraud. And it's quite simple, actually. Every industry is targeted. So as you can see on this screenshot, uh, on this page, uh, there are a lot of screenshots related to account fraud attacks that targeted different kinds of industries. It targets hospitali uh, hospitality companies. It targets airlines. It targets streaming services. Basically, whenever there is an account to be stolen, there will be attackers you know, willing to try to steal user accounts. For example, when it comes to hospitality or airlines, attackers like to steal user accounts to get access to their loyalty points that they can use later, you know, to get uh, free stuff, uh, free, you know, like free, uh, free tickets, for example. When it comes to Disney or streaming services, for example, this can just be, you know, to sell or rent the stolen user accounts so that you can benefit from the service without actually paying for it. But in general, stealing a user account or creating a first uh, a fake account is the first step to, you know, other attack, other fraud. You may use the stolen account to spread malware, to steal you know, personal information. So it's really important to secure website and mobile application against credential stuffing attacks. And so what's a credential stuffing attack? Basically, as an attacker, if I want to steal user accounts, the, the most popular way is the following. Uh, 
most of the people, they reuse the same password across different websites, across different mobile applications. So as an attacker, what I will do is I will search for a database of a leaked password. So maybe you know you had an account on the platform that got you know hacked and your uh, your password you know leaked. Uh, and because you reuse the same password and the same email on other services, then I, as an attacker, I may be able you know to get access to your account even if this other platform you know has a good security and didn't get hacked. And so as an attacker, I will make a bot. I will make you know lot of requests in parallel. I will, you know, start a lot of automated browsers, so what we call bots, and each of these bots, they will make thousands of requests using all, you know, the stolen credentials that they obtain from other breaches. And because people reuse the same password on different services, then there is a high probability of finding uh, other user accounts that reuse the same credentials. And to give you an idea of the size of the problem, so on this slide, I show a credential stuffing attack that uh, we blocked on one of our customers at Datadog. The attack lasted four days, four days. And during these four days, the attacker made more than 107 million malicious login attempts using bots, obviously. <laughs> and he leveraged more than 91 million IP addresses located all around the world, which made Usually, this is used to stay under the radar and avoid, you know, triggering rate-limiting uh, protections. So, talking about protection techniques, what are the current countermeasures used against a fraud by most of the websites and mobile applications? The most popular is what I like to call traditional captcha. Things like reCAPTCHA v2, for example, that you can see on the right of the slide, where you know you ask the end user to select stairs or you know fire hydrant or traffic lights to prove that they are human another popular technique is what i call rate limiting or ip based rate limiting techniques so you you may want to block uh, an ip uh, or an account if there are too many requests or login attempts coming from it then you have all kinds of ip reputation techniques so for example you may want to be more aggressive with data center ips Geoblocking techniques is quite similar, but you, you will block or be more aggressive towards certain countries where your website or application doesn't operate. And the last one is WAF signature. So most websites have a WAF, and uh, you may add you know, signatures or rules in your WAF to block you know, malicious attackers. But attackers adapted a lot lately. And these kind of countermeasures are not really effective. And I, I will explain you why, what changed in the bot world and why, you know, these kind of countermeasures are not really efficient at blocking attackers. So the, the, the first revolution, I would say, or the latest revolution happened last year with the new headless Chrome. So headless Chrome has been in the wild for a few years already, maybe six, seven years. I, I don't remember exactly. But last year, Google released a new version that they called a uh, new headless Chrome. And the code of this new headless Chrome is the same as the code of, uh, head, uh, of Chrome. So it's located on the same branch. And because of that, headless Chrome has a near perfect fingerprint. It has almost no uh, different uh, fingerprinting attribute, almost no side effects compared to a real Chrome. So it has become really easier for attackers to get you know, clean fingerprints. Okay, but even you know the the the, the last uh, differences in the fingerprint, uh, you know, in the fingerprint of headless Chrome, the new headless Chrome, you have bot frameworks, a new generation of bot frameworks like Selenium driverless or no driver that focus on these last you know inconsistencies to erase them, to erase the side effects, and they focus on low level protocols like CDP, uh, the Chrome DevTool protocol, to make the bots less detectable. But it's not only about fingerprinting attributes. Uh, when it comes to bot detection, attackers will also try to modify their behavior to stay under the radar. And you have a lot of libraries that helps attacker to you know, have a more consistent user behavior. For example, you have libraries like Ghost Cursor that help attacker to generate more human-like mouse movements. So I'm not saying these mouse movements are exactly like 
what a human would do, but you have a lot of libraries that makes it more difficult to detect uh, you know, inconsistent mouse movements to avoid having bots that move their mouse in straight line, for example. Attackers also have access to millions of clean IP addresses, clean residential IP addresses that belong to well-known uh, ISPs like uh, Comcast, AT&T, Verizon in the US, uh, Deutsche Telekom in Germany, uh, Virgin Media in England, for example. And so you can select IP addresses that belong to well-known uh, ISP, and you can even select the country, you know, to select IP addresses in the same country as the website you target to avoid geo-blocking techniques, for example. And finally, when it comes to traditional capture, uh, they have become almost useless. Uh, they have a lot of friction for a real human user, and a lot of academic studies showed lately that bots are you know, better at solving this captcha than real human users. So these are you know, screenshots from this article. And they show that basically bots are way faster and way more accurate than human users at solving this traditional capture. So it is not efficient anymore to protect critical endpoints like login or account creation. And it's not only about you know solving captcha, but you know a few years ago it was already possible to solve captcha using captcha farm services like to captcha. But with all the improvements in image and audio recognition techniques the average response time to solve a cap, uh, to capture, uh, recapture, for example, has dropped from uh, 45 seconds to five seconds, so divided, divided by nine. But the cost uh, was also divided by three, from $3 per 1,000 recapture to $1. So it has become easier, faster, and cheaper to solve this capture automatically. So it's not safe to use this traditional capture only uh, when it comes to protecting your uh, user accounts. So to summarize the different you know, uh, techniques used by fraudsters to bypass detection techniques, you have capture farms, which enable them to bypass traditional captures. You have pro residential proxies and proxies in general that enables attackers to bypass rate limiting because they can distribute their attacks, their attack across thousands or millions of IP addresses. And also it enables them to stay under the radar by having you know, residential IPs with good reputation and IPs located in the same countries as the website they target to avoid geo-blocking. And finally, attackers have access to a lot of bot frameworks that have you know, clean fingerprinting attributes, clear, clean signatures. So it enables them to bypass WAF signatures, WAF rules. OK, it's, it's bad. <laughs> uh, I, I'm quite pessimistic. Uh, so what, what can we do you know, to, to protect uh, uh, you know, your website or your mobile application against bots uh, in this case? Uh, before that, I want to show you, you know, the, the tooling used specifically by attackers when it comes to credential stuffing attacks. <laughs> uh, when it comes to credential stuffing attacks, there is like, a really popular tool called OpenBullet2. This is a tool that, unfortunately, for us, for you, you know, having a, a website that you want to protect, it makes it really easy for an attacker to make a good, or I would say, uh, like yeah, a, a good sophisticated, a, a good or sophisticated attack that enable you know to bypass all the traditional uh, techniques that I showed you before. So Open Bullet, you know, it's really easy to use. You can provide you know a list of credentials that you want to test. You can provide proxies, but also it enables you you know to uh, uh, leverage capture farms you know, natively in the, in the software. So as you can see on this slide, uh, you can solve automatically uh, edge capture, fun capture, recapture v2. Basically, it, would, uh, it will enable your bot, you know, to interact with capture farms to automatically solve capture. But you don't need to be, uh, you know, a bot development expert or, you know, to stay under the radar because online you will find a lot of configuration that you can use as is. On forums, on GitHub, you, you will find a lot of configuration for the mainstream website. So for example, I'm talking about Disney, I'm talking about you know, NordVPN, I'm talking about Spotify, uh, all kinds of websites you will find configuration to uh, you know, make automatically requests on the, the website to test you know, stolen uh, credentials using proxies. It will integrate with capture farms and you don't need to know how to code at all. It's already you know, taken care of by, the, by OpenBullet. OK, uh, okay. so what should you do? <laughs> the, the, the first thing you should do 
to you know protect your websites against account fraud is to acknowledge that traditional detection techniques are not enough. Rate limiting, CAPTCHA, WAF are not enough. Uh, using you know open source tools, free tools, any attacker you know can easily you know make requests with you know clean fingerprint that will bypass a WAF, distribute attack across you know thousands of IP to stay under the radar and you know avoid rate limiting techniques. So what you can do on your side is, for example, when it comes to credential stuffing, you can enforce or incentivize your users to use multi-factor authentication. It's no silver bullet, but it will make the life of attackers way more difficult. When it comes to fake account creation, you may want to verify you know, if the attackers are using disposable email uh, domains. You may want to force phone verification, but same, it's no silver bullet. It will just make the life of attackers a bit more difficult. But in general, to detect bot attacks, it's important to have a real-time protection solution like what we do at Datadome. And this solution should be efficient against distributed attacks because attackers nowadays, they will distribute their attacks across thousands or millions of residential IPs. Your protection should be efficient against capture farms because it's integrated in a lot of tools used by you know, bot developers. But security, should not come at the expense of user experience. It's really important, you know, to do all the analysis in real time, but in the background, you know, without bothering your actual human users, because you don't want to degrade their user experience. So how do we do it at Datadome? This slide gives a high level overview of what we do. Basically, every request of the user session is analyzed in real time in less than two milliseconds. And then we use a multi-layered approach. By that, I mean that we are using all kinds of signals from fingerprinting, behavioral analysis, uh, proxy detection, IP reputation, contextual signals. But we are also using a layer of different approach. So different kind of like fingerprinting techniques, behavioral analysis, supervised and supervised ML models. Why do we do this? The reason is simple. As I showed you in the previous slides, you know, attackers are trying to lie about everything. They are trying to lie about their fingerprint. They are trying to mimic user behavior. They are trying to stay under the radar, you know, by making a low volume of requests per IP. They use clean IP addresses. So once you know this, it's important to make sure that you are using all the signals available from fingerprinting to proxy detection to behavioral analysis. And you want to use these signals in different ways. You want to look at these signals using different approaches. So we use supervised machine learning, for example, to score the, you know, the quality of the user fingerprint to predict how suspicious it is, how likely it is to come from a bot. But then we also use unsupervised models to analyze the user behavior, to detect whether or not you know, the, the way the user is interacting with the website is consistent with what a user would do. The idea is to add a lot of layers to make the life of the attacker more difficult. And the good, the good thing is that every day we process more than 5 trillion signals. And our strength is that we protect some of the biggest website and mobile application in the world, which means that whenever we observe something, you know, a malicious attack on a customer, you benefit from our knowledge and we use it, you know, to improve the quality of the detection across all our customers. And it enables us you know, to propagate information across customers so that whenever you know, we observe an attacker somewhere, we automatically propagate this knowledge everywhere. OK, so if you want to test if you are properly protected against bad bot attacks, we created a, a small tool called the bot tester. So you can visit datadome.co slash bot tester and enter you know, the, the URL of your website or the URL of a page that you want to test more specifically on your website. And then we'll send a few uh, a few kinds of bots, more or less sophisticated, that try to lie more or less, that use proxies or not. And then we'll you know, provide you with a report to say whether or not what you have in place, maybe you already have a WAF, uh, and you want to test if it's good enough to block you know, our simple bots. And so you can test your website and uh, you know, see uh, the, current, the state of the current detection on your website. And that's it.